You know, so I suppose that now you can see my screen, right? Yes, we can. Thank you. Oh, oh, yeah, I think we can we can get started. Um, so the next talk um, in this morning session is a talk by Michal Doha again from Prague, and um, we'll talk about approximation properties in Lipschitz three spaces over groups. Um, so please, Michal. Okay. Thank you, Tomek, for, for, the, for the invitation and for the introduction now. So, uh, so after Marek's uh, uh, general survey, I will talk about uh, some more specialized and relatively recent results, but they will hopefully show some, uh, some interactions with uh, of the theory of logistic spaces with some other branches of mathematics. So the interactions will appear mainly in the, in the proof, but there will also be, uh, if there will be a time, some consequences uh, outside of outside of just three spaces. So this talk is based uh, mostly on uh, one joint work with uh, Peter Kaufman, and uh, part of the talk also is based on on another project uh, with Marek Zulf, which will actually be applied to the uh, to the work with uh, with Peter Kaufman. So let me start with the plan. So uh, so the main goal is to. Uh, is to show the, the ideas of the group of the, of the following theorem, which Marek already mentioned in the, in, the, in, the in the introduction or in the survey. And there's the following. So uh, if we take uh, any uh, compact metrizable group G and we take uh, any uh, compatible active invariant metric on uh, this group, then the G3 space over this, uh, this metric space, compact metric space, has the, has the metric approximation property. And uh, then another uh, another goal which I want to which I want to uh, do and uh, another result which I want to present, which on the first uh, first side uh, seems uh, not not too much related, but actually it is uh, one of the tools in the, in the proof of the of the of the first theorem, and that's uh, that comes from the uh, from the second project with Marek that I mentioned, and this is the following. So it will be just a uh, just very uh, small part of the project, just some. Just some very uh, specialized version, which I will present, and that's about uh, 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 how to how to get uh, some let's say projections from uh, from actions of uh, groups by isometries on metric spaces. So maybe I will not uh, I will not read the, the result right now because later I will I will set it again and in a slightly slightly more general form that we will need. And then lastly, if, uh, if I have enough time, I will also present uh, another result from, from the paper with, uh, with Pedro Kaufman, which is about, uh, again, about approximation properties over, of lecture three spaces over some groups, but this time these uh, groups will be uh, quite different. They will, you can actually say the, like for almost the opposite type of groups, they will not be compact, they will be uh, finitely generated. So the, the, the group as a space will be, will be a discrete, uh, discrete metric space. And we will not prove uh, something for for all, the, all all such groups. We will just prove something for for some relatively large but still a very specialized uh, class of groups, uh, which is somehow maybe not, not too easy to describe. I will I will try to do it later, and it includes, uh, for example, all, all hyperbolic groups. And we prove that the free space over over such groups uh, uh, has always a uh, shorter basis. So in this case, I will not talk, not, not talk too much about the proof. I will just try to explain all the notions from uh, from the statement and mention some some corollaries and uh, and consequences which which are maybe even outside of of the theory of, of free spaces. So let me start with uh, just a little bit some some motivational introduction, but it's mostly repetition of what uh, Marek has already said on this. So this is yeah. So as as Marek said. These approximation properties in the three spaces, they have been one of the main topics since the, since the beginning, or not since the very beginning of the three spaces, but since the beginning of the, uh, of the paper of Kotfra and Kauton, which basically started uh, uh, or restarted the, the interest uh, in, these, in these spaces. So since the beginning, it was, it was clear that uh, not all the three spaces uh, have the, uh, say, bounded approximation property. So the so the focus shifted on some on some uh, special special classes of metric spaces and 
as much as Marek said, they are, for example, mostly compact metric spaces. So Mark mentioned that uh, uh, there is a relation with bound uh, approximation property and uh, linear extension of operators, which is, I should, I should say, uh, this is something, uh, again, a subject which, uh, which actually goes uh, even beyond mathematics. It has applications in, in computer science. And uh, so Mark mentioned that if we have, uh, so let's, let's have some uh, compact, well, general metric space uh, K, let's say, and then if we have a rich, uh, rich class of uh, finite subspaces, so that for each uh, subspace A L, we have a uh, extension operator which is which is linear. That's the, that's the important point because we always have we can always extend uh, logistic functions, but not always linearly. So if we if we do have uh, linear extension operators, then we get the, the BAP. And uh, the important result of uh, Gilbert Flua is that. Uh, if the metric space is compact, we actually have a kind of converse or almost converse. So if the ideology free space has the BAP, then we have uh, some uh, linear almost extension operators. So uh, from, uh, from arbitrarily dense, uh, dense uh, uh, nets in the, in the compact metric space. So these, these operators are not really extensions, but uh, almost. So they, there, is, there is some there is some possible error, which is which is which is controlled. And then the second class, and uh, this is again what, what Marek has already mentioned uh, of uniform discrete spaces, and that they are important mostly because of this of this question, which uh, which Marek has already mentioned. So I will I will not I will not talk about it, um, but this somehow just justifies that. That the, the choice of, of groups that we work with, like compact groups and uh, uniformly discrete groups, is, is, is somehow reasonable. So I will start now uh, uh, giving the ideas of the proof of, the, of this main theorem. So the proof consists of uh, two parts. So in the first part, uh, we will prove uh, we will prove the result for a special subclass of compact groups. So we will prove it. Uh, when G is a, uh, a compact Lie group. So you, I, I, will, I will not explain what a Lie group is. Actually, we, we, don't, we don't need it because uh, compact Lie group is actually the, the same up to, up to topological isomorphism as a, <clears throat> as a compact uh, matrix group. So it's a, you, can, you, can always, uh, you can always view a compact Lie group as a compact subgroup of, uh, of, the, of the group of, uh, uh, of, of matrices. And we prove that when we have such a group and it is equipped with any left invariant compatible metric, then the corresponding free space has the MAP. So here, here I want to emphasize that, uh, uh, that the metric is arbitrarily just left invariant and compatible. Uh, where, where left invariant means that if you if you take a pair of point, a pair of uh, group elements and you multiply them, both of them uh, by the same element from the left, then the distance uh, does not change. And compatible just means that uh, the topology uh, generated by the metric is the same as the as the original topology of the group. And uh, there are many such uh, such metrics on, on any group. So uh, I mean, people from 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 Lie theory they are, they are used to work uh, uh, usually with uh, with some uh, Riemannian Riemannian distances on on quantity groups. But I want to emphasize that here really it is a it is an arbitrary left invariant compatible metric. And although uh, on compact groups or left invariant compatible metrics are uniformly equivalent, they are not always uh, uh, bilateral equivalent. So, so for for the same group, you can have uh, two uh, two different metrics which uh, which are not Lipschitz equivalent, and actually they give uh, different uh, Lipschitz free spaces. And then the second part, which is where we will uh, apply the tools uh, from the project with Marek. Uh, that's that's where we uh, consider uh, completely general compact metric groups, and we use the fact that uh, these groups are uh, actually inverse limits of uh, compact groups, and these techniques uh, of, of projections will show that this uh, MAP actually uh, passes to the uh, to this inverse limit. So we will we will apply the the first part and this uh, technique of projections to. Uh, to conclude the results for uh, for uh, for general groups. So let me start with the with the first part. So first, just some just some introduction, some uh, some basics about uh, about compact groups. 
So the first part that should be mentioned is that every compact group uh, doesn't have to be uh, re in general is always equipped with a, uh, with a unique Borel probability measure, uh, which is uh, and the, this is the most important property, which is which is invariant. So if you take any Borel subset A of the of the group and you take uh, two elements the G and H, then the measure of of this uh, of this subset A is the same as the measure of the subset where which we uh, multiply from the left by G and uh, from from the right by H. So this is this measure is what is called uh, the Haar measure, and uh, and it is unique, provided that we uh, we normalize it. Uh, so we make we make it probability that it is that it is unique. And then another thing is that uh, then using this uh, this unique measure we can define uh, convolutional functions. So if we have uh, two, you know, let's say L one functions from on G, where, where the measure is of course is this Haar measure. Then we can define the, the convolution of these two functions by by this this formula. So if you are if you are familiar with uh, with convolution of, uh, of real functions, this is this is exactly the same. Just the just the addition of, of the reals is replaced by this uh, by this general uh, general uh, group multiplication. And then also the point to make to make is that uh, then the convolution is is also in in L one and if we we will usually actually work with uh, with, uh, with better functions. So if the if these functions are, for example, continuous, then the, the convolution is again continuous. And even better, if the if the functions are Lipschitz, then actually the, the functions will be the convolution will be will be also Lipschitz. And then uh, another important thing uh, which will be needed in the in the proof is the is the notion of unitary representation. So unitary representation of, of the group. This is just, this is a way how to how to represent the group as a, as a group of uh, unitary operators on some on some Hilbert space. Or in other words, it is uh, it is an action of G on some Hilbert space by linear isometries, or in other words, by by unitary operators. Or again, in other words, it is a uh, oh I should I should say cont continuous action of course continuous action of, of G. Or in other words, it is a it is a group homomorphism from G uh, to a unitary group of, of, of some of some Hilbert space in general with, uh, with, the, with the strong operator topology. And then uh, this unitary representation is called irreducible if the only invariant subspaces of, of this action are just the, the trivial subspace, just the, the zero, and the whole Hilbert space. And it is an important consequence of, of the, the Famous uh, Peter Weil theorem that irreducible interrepresentations of compact groups are always uh, finite dimensional. So uh, now, so this first point is just a repetition of of, of, uh, of, of this definition of interrepresentation, and the second point is uh, is the following. So let's uh, let's now have some irreducible interrepresentation, which is by the previous point finite dimensional. So we can in this uh, finite dimensional Hilbert space we can we can fix some uh, <clears throat> finite uh, orthonormal basis uh, uh, psi one up to up to psi n, and then for every uh, pair i j less than n they they can be equal. We can consider the following functions from the group to the to the field of complex numbers, and the function is of the following form. So for uh, group element g, we take the co corresponding unitary operator uh, u of g. And by this unitary operator, we uh, we move this uh, this element from the basis uh, psi i, and we take the uh, the inner product with, uh, with the element uh, psi j. So this is some uh, this is some continuous function on, on G, and uh, it's called uh, it will be called uh, matrix coefficient. So they these matrix coefficients they completely determine the uh, the unitary representation, and moreover they have the, the following important property. So if we take any continuous function on, on G, continuous function of psi, and we take some, some matrix coefficient and we take uh, their convolution, so it will be some continuous function. But the, the very important point is that this continuous function will lie in the, in the span of these uh, matrix coefficients, which uh, there are just finitely many of them because the, the Hilbert space is uh, finite dimensional. So, uh, so the so the, the convolution will lie in a, in a uh, finite dimensional space. 
And now, uh, like I just recall from Marek's talk, uh, what uh, what this uh, BAP is. So I've actually uh, I've actually used uh, two different formulations, which were which were not used by by uh, by Marek, but they are they are equivalent. So one of them is quite standard. So uh, one definition is that uh, Banach space X has a lambda BAP for every finite subset F of the Banach space X and every epsilon. There is a finite rank operator. So the range of, of T is a finite dimensional subspace uh, whose norm is bounded by lambda. And, uh, and uh, uh, here should be, uh, X should be from this finite subset F. So uh, T of X uh, is uh, of distance less than epsilon from X. So you can basically, you can translate this definition into, uh, into saying that, uh, that there is a net of uh, finite rank operators which uh, converge to the identity in the, in the strong operator topology. And all these operators are, uh, are uniformly bounded in the norm. And uh, another equivalent definition is, uh, is the same as the consequence of the first one, just with the exception that uh, actually you can, uh, you can consider just a net of finite rank, operator, uh, finite rank operators which converge to the identity in the weak operator topology. So this is still, uh, this is still equivalent. And I will use these two uh, these two formulations uh, in, in, the, in the proof. So now uh, this is some proposition that uh, I will I will not uh, I will not prove, but that uh, that we used in the in the main proof. And this is a characterization of uh, of uh, BAP for Lipschitz free spaces over compact metric spaces. And it is the following. So so K is now uh, compact metric space, not necessarily a group. And uh, f of k has the lambda BAP if there is a net of uh, bounded operators on C of k. So the, the operators are defined uh, not on which is functions, but they are defined on uh, just on all continuous functions of k. They are a finite rank. They map uh, Lipschitz functions to, to Lipschitz functions. So actually, then later we will need that they map uh, Lip zero functions. So Lipschitz functions, uh, which uh, which vanish in at, at zero, so the, 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 the functions from the dual of free space, uh, that they map lib zero functions to lib zero functions, but I, I, I don't state it here in this proposition, but because this is, uh, uh, it, it is not automatic, but somehow whenever you have uh, operators like this, you can uh, somehow modify them to, to, uh, to, to achieve this, so that they, you, can, you, can, you can make them better to, to map lib zero functions to lib zero functions. Then we need that uh, they don't increase uh, the, the Lipschitz constant of, uh, of Lipschitz functions too much. So exactly, we, we, wanted to, we want them to increase it at most by, by lambda plus, uh, plus some epsilon. So just, just notice that we, we wanted these operators to be, to be bounded, but uh, on, on, on C of K. And uh, so this, this norm here is, is uh, quite different and uh, in general, not, not, not so much related to, uh, to the Lipschitz norm. And finally, we want that uh, this uh, this net uh, T, T alpha f uh, converges pointwise to to f for every for every uh, Lipschitz function uh, Lipschitz function f. And uh, and we prove that if, if we have if we have such one of the operators, then uh, we can obtain we can obtain a net uh, of uh, of uh, finite rank operators on the free space which which converge to the identity in the, in the weak operator topology. So we get the, the, the BAP. And we will apply, apply this proposition to, to, to our main theorem. Uh, and the, one, more, one, more, uh, one more fact that I, that I need, which is very important. And this is actually the, the only point where we use the, uh, the, the properties of the metric on the group, especially that the, that the metric is uh, left invariant. And this is the following. So, uh, so let's have two functions. One is uh, just from just uh, L1 function. Phi is just L1 function of G. And the other one, uh, other one Psi is a Lipschitz function. And then, uh, then the point is that their convolution is essentially Lipschitz. And moreover, the Lipschitz constant of, of this convolution is, uh, is bounded by, uh, by the Lipschitz constant of Psi and the L1 norm of, of Phi. And now we are uh, we are almost ready to, to prove the theorem. So we just need uh, one uh, proposition. I, I, I mentioned here from, from harmonical analysis, just to emphasize that this is not, this is not something that we prove, this is something very classical. 
uh, and that's uh, there's a following. So if uh, G is a uh, compact matrix group or compact compact E group with some uh, higher measure mu, then there is a sequence uh, R n of positive real functions on, on G with the following properties. So first of all, every R n is in the span of uh, this matrix coefficients for some irreducible unit representation U. Second, if we take uh, any continuous function uh, psi on G, then uh, the convolution, the, the sequence of, uh, of convolutions uh, converges pointwise to, to the original function psi. And lastly, that the, the integral of each Rn is, uh, is, is one. And then we just do the following. We define uh, operator on, on C of G to C of G uh, in the following way. We take a continuous function psi, and we just take the, the convolution with, with, this, with this Rn. And now we just want to show that uh, these, these functions, these operators Tm, they satisfy uh, the, the conditions from, from this proposition. And then we can conclude that, that uh, f of uh, G is, uh, has, has uh, MAP, so, which is the same as uh, one, one BAP. So first, uh, we need to check that these uh, Tn's now are bounded operators on, on C of K. But that's clear because uh, these, they are just convolutions uh, uh, with continuous functions. So, so they, they map continuous functions to continuous functions. And it is easy to check that also that they are bounded. Now we need to check that they are finite rank. But this is true. And this follows from this uh, important property uh, that I mentioned here. So here I mentioned that the uh, convolution of any continuous function with a matrix coefficient lies in this finite dimensional space. And this, this Rn is, uh, is itself from, from this pen. But just by linearity, you can check that if you take a convolution of a continuous function with something from the span here, it will again lie in the span. So it will again lie in the in a, in a finite dimensional space. So, so indeed, these uh, Tn's are of finite rank. Then the, we should check that they map Lipschitz functions to Lipschitz functions. But this follows from this proposition. Uh, that uh, convolution of, uh, of a long function and Lipschitz functions is, is Lipschitz. So this is again OK. Then we need to check this, uh, this estimate with, with lambda equal to 1. But this is again uh, content of, of this proposition, because the Lipschitz function of the convolution is bounded by, uh, by the Lipschitz function, uh, Lipschitz constant of, of psi and the uh, L1 norm of phi. But L1 norm of pi is, uh, is, is 1, because the integral of this Rn is, is 1. And lastly, that uh, we need to check that this uh, this sequence T and F uh, converges pointwise to, to A. But this is, again, this again follows from this uh, proposition uh, from Hormat analysis. OK, so, so that's it. And uh, this proves that, uh, uh, that the Lipschitz free space over a compact matrix group as a as the MAP. So now uh, I want to <clears throat> go to the second part, but uh, before I do it, I I will talk just a little bit about the about the project with Marek, which we we didn't apply. And we need to in this in this project we, we consider some 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 actions or groups on, on metric spaces by isometries. So in this setting, uh, because I want to just specialize to compact groups. We have some uh, compact group, and it acts on a uh, metric space by 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 isometries. It can be more general, but let's let's just say by by isometries. And we would like to extend this action to an action on on the Lipschitz free space. So we know that we can always extend uh, uh, Lipschitz functions which preserve zero to to something on on the on the free space. But in this case. Uh, we have an action by asymmetries which uh, which does not necessarily preserve zero. But still, we can do the following. So for every G, we can consider the map from, from M, now not to not to M, but to, to, to F of M. In the following way, we map M to the uh, to the image of uh, GM, the Dirac element of GM, minus uh, Dirac element uh, G0. Which is which? This is not a zero because uh, G uh, in general does not preserve does not preserve the zero. And now you can check that this is actually a, a zero preserving uh, isometry, 
So it extends to a linear isometry of, of the free space, which will be denoted uh, pi of g. And then you can moreover verify that uh, this uh, linear isometry is actually on two. And then th that the, the map uh, uh, from, from g to, uh, to this, which means the linear isometries of, of this free space, that this is actually a continuous group hypomorphism. Uh, or equivalently, that this, this pi defines a, a continuous action of G on, on the free space by, by linear isometrics. And also, we can, uh, if we for, for every G, we consider the, the following map on the, on the free space, where we, uh, we map X to uh, pi, uh, pi G of X, and then we add this, uh, this direct element G0. So this, this pi g of x is, is an extension of this map where we uh, subtracted this delta g0. And here we again uh, add it back. So this, this will be an affine isometry. Right? This is a linear isometry plus some translation. So this will be a fine isometry. And uh, it, will be, it will actually extend the, the original map, uh, uh, the original isometry of m. So this is, uh, so this is an affine isometry extending the, the original the original isometry of, of M. And then the theorem that, uh, that I, I want to apply is that we are in exactly in that setting. So we have a, a compact group acting on a metric space M by isometries. Then we have some linear subspace. So this is just the subspace of those uh, elements from the free space, which are fixed by, uh, by all group elements. And the statement is that this, uh, this subspace is uh, one empty, it is one complemented. And the most important fact is that it is actually linearly isometric to another free space. And to a free space uh, uh, M, M uh, mod G with, with this metric, where M, M mod G is the, is the space of orbits. So G is a compact group. So these orbits in this metric space M are some compact, uh, compact subsets. And we consider uh, and we, we equip this uh, space of orbits with, with the Hausdorff distance. So this is some metric space, and uh, the free space over this metric space is uh, in our area symmetric exactly to uh, to this space. So in the following, it will not be uh, too much important. Uh, the, I mean the, the what this space is. It will, it will be just important that this this space of, of orbits is uh, is uh, one complemented in in the free space free space over m and now we want to prove the, the first theorem for for a general compact compact group so uh, so we again use uh, this uh, peter weyer theorem and it's, it says that um, our consequences of, of it is that uh, there is actually a topological isomorphism from g to a uh, possibly infinite direct product of uh, of uh, finite dimensional unitary groups. So all these HNs are uh, finite dimensional Hilbert spaces. And each, uh, each uh, unitary group of this Hilbert space is some, some compact, uh, compact matrix group. So now, so now the, without also generality, we can assume that uh, applying this isomorphism that G is actually uh, a closed subgroup of, a, of this direct product. So G is a closed subgroup of a Direct product of possibly infinitely many, uh, infinitely many finite dimensional unitary groups, and then for each n, we can just uh, consider the projection. So the projection onto the first n coordinates, and we denote by g and uh, the the image of this projection. So this this g n is some is some uh, quotient of of g, and we define so so on g there was some some left invariant metric d. And we define now a left invariant metric dm on the on this uh, on this quotient gm. Uh, so there are uh, so maybe maybe let me just mention this uh, this uh, this definition. So so this gm is a is a quotient of, of g. So there is some uh, there is some closed normal subgroup hm. So that gm is equal to g mod hm. And then so then gm you can view gm as a as a uh, as a metric space, as a set of uh, left cosets of this of this H n, so each H H n is uh, uh, so sorry. Each left coset is a is some compact subset of, of G. So we can again consider the Hausdorff metric on for for these for these cosets, and then we get that this quotient metric on on, on G n 
is exactly the the, the Hausdorff metric of, of these of these uh, left cosets, and that somehow uh, put us uh, close to the statement of the theorem uh, with, with Marek that I mentioned, and indeed we uh, we want to apply it. So so we want to we want to show that the free space of this uh, GN with this quotient metric is one complemented in in G uh, GD, and and why? So how we apply it? So in this theorem now, this metric space M will be actually the, the, the whole group G uh, from, from, the, from the next consideration. And this, this, this G here will be just this normal subgroup HN. And this uh, HN will act on G just by, by multiplication from the left, which is by isometries because the metric is left invariant. And then we get that uh, uh, this uh, F of G, F of M, which is equal to F of G, will have a one complemented subspace linearly isometric to M mod G, which now is a G mod HN, which is actually exactly this GN. And with this Hausdorff metric, which as I said, is this, uh, this quotient metric DN. So we get that indeed this uh, free space over GN uh, with DN is one complemented in, in, uh, in F, of, uh, F of G. And this is witnessed by some uh, normal projection DN. So I have, I have uh, just uh, just one minute, so I will, I will I will try to finish. So uh, and then the, the important fact is that these uh, these projections PM uh, actually so so this can be this can be this can be reformulated as that these these projections they uh, converge to the identity in the in the strong property topology. And we know that each uh, GN is a uh, compact subgroup of uh, finitely many compact matrix group, right? Because uh, it's a compact subgroup of uh, direct product of just finitely many unitary groups. So it is itself a compact matrix group. So by the first part, we get that uh, it has uh, the MAP. And now we check that uh, the free space over the whole G has, has the MAP. So we just pick some uh, finite subset F and some epsilon by the proposition above, which I mean that these, uh, these projections uh, converge in the strong operated topology to the identity. We can find some n, so that for every x from f, pn of x is uh, of distance less than epsilon half from, from x. And then we use that uh, this free space over gn has the MIP. So we know that there is a, some finite rank uh, normal operator. Uh, from here to here, which is which we can view as a uh, as a subspace of, of this, so one so that we have uh, we have this inequality, and then we just apply. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm about to finish, and then we just apply the the triangle inequality of these uh, of these two, two inequalities, and we get that uh, the distance of this is is less than epsilon. So we can just take as the, the desired finite, uh, finite rank normal operator the composition of the projection with the finite rank operator defined on this FG and DN. And then we get that you know, this concludes that, uh, that the free space of, of G has the, has the MAP. So I, I, will, I will finish. I will finish here. Okay, many thanks for, for this wonderful talk. Um, do we have any questions from the audience? Do you know if it um, if you can do better than the MAP? I mean, could it have a shorter basis, or do you have counterexamples to that? Uh, no, I, I we don't have a counterexamples. We uh, we can have something better. We can have FDD for uh, for uh, for some special special groups which are uh, so for groups which are uh, homeomorphic to the counter space, so totally totally disconnected. Uh, Total discounted compact groups, we have uh, we have FDD for, for that, but, yeah, but we don't know anything better. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Niels. Any other questions? Um, well, if not, let us. Um, Thank Michal for this for this great talk. Thank you. Um, and we have uh, we have a little bit of 
time, I think. Let me check um, the schedule. Right. Um, yes, we have we have like five minutes, but um, maybe it's a good moment to um, to make a tea or something, and we can resume in five minutes. So let me stop recording. <laughs>